Hoi there, chummers, and welcome to another Shadowrun RPG review. And uh, we're going to stick with uh, the older editions for this review. I think the last one that I did was in, in an older edition. I don't know. I don't remember. They're all starting to kind of run together. <laughs> so anyway, today's review is about Threats. Now, what is Threats? Well, this is a book that came out, I believe it was second edition, uh, was the first iteration of it. Um, let me see if it tells me which edition it's for. Eh, 1996. Eh, 96. So yeah, it was probably second edition. But uh, Threats basically talks about some of the some of the conspiracy theories in the sixth world. It, there were, have been several iterations of the Threats book over the years. Uh, there was this one that came out in second edi second edition. I'm just going to, someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it was second edition. Uh, there was Threats 2, which was kind of like a follow-up to this book that was done for third edition. Uh, fourth edition had another book, I think it was just called Conspiracy Theories or something like that. But 4th edition had a book uh, like this as well. And I'm sure 5th and 6th edition have had their books dealing with conspiracy theories in, in the Shadowrun universe. I don't know what those would be called right now. But I, I, I'll guarantee that this is something that the authors of the game are continue and the developers are continuing to explore because it how could you not? It just it provides some really great uh, adventure ideas uh, and some really great conspiracies. And also just some really great artwork. I mean, look at that. Just a, a great dragon getting torn to pieces by insect spirits. And that's on the front cover of the book. Right? I mean, how, how, could, you, how could you get any better than that? So anyway, let's dive into a little bit about what's included in the Threats book. So you have the introduction um, that talks about how to use the book. <laughs> and it talks about the best way to use a lot of these threats. See, a lot of these threats are not... A lot of these are not individuals or, like, villains that you would encounter. There's a couple that are. Um, not very many of them, though. Most of them are uh, background-level threats. So these are, like, conspiracies that you would find... Uh, in and around the Sixth World, dangerous organizations and, and things like that. Um, the individuals that you do find here, a lot of them are uh, Avengers-level threats, essentially. Um, you've got, in fact, you've got one in the section called Are You Afraid? Uh, are You Afraid of the Dark? I was thinking about that old 90s show on Nickelodeon. Um, are afraid of the Dark. That one, let's go to that one really quick talks about do 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 ah, here we go so this one talks about a an as it an as technology blood mage known as uh, Damien Dark I think was his, I don't remember if he actually had a first name Mr. Dark is what he goes by in this book I, I really don't know if he ever had a name uh, uh, other than Mr. Dark, but uh, Dark actually features in the Shadowrun no novel Stranger Souls, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't know if he features further in that trilogy, because I've never been able to find the other two books in that trilogy, which is a shame, because Stranger Souls is actually a really good book, but I, I, I digress. Uh, we'll talk about Stranger, Sh Stranger Souls, if I can say it, another day. But it, really good book. You should check it out if if you can find it. I, I haven't even been able to find uh, the original the, the few times that I've actually looked, uh, although I do own the original. I bought it in a bookstore when I was a kid. So there you go. So Dark essentially, Dark is an example of like an individual that's an Avengers level threat. Um, and it, the story about Dark is told in a really great way through diary entries from somebody named Lenny. In fact, one of the Shadowland users uh, posted this, quote unquote, posted this to the Shadowland BBS uh, as a cautionary tale. It, she was, I, I believe she was sent his diary just before, either just before or just after uh, Lenny ended up killing himself. Um, but yeah, 
That's it's it's a really good story, really creepy, and and it it starts out as as dreams that keep getting worse and worse. They feature dark until he he eventually just snaps and and goes into a stuffer shack and and opens fire and not a good not a good situation at all. So really well done. And there's different there's different comments from different uh, Shadowland users uh, in the in the book as well in the story in particular, but in the book as well. Some of them either confirming conspiracies, the theories about certain conspiracies or organizations or people, or refuting them or adding their own spins on it to a point where a lot of times you're not really sure what the real story is. Uh, my dog's barking in their background, if you can hear that. And uh, truthfully, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be you shouldn't know what the real story is with a lot of these organizations because the real story should be whatever the game master wants. And that's the point of this book is to kind of give you a framework to build some of these organizations and use them or in, insert them into your own campaign with their own motivations and things like that. Now, one of the groups that I've used in the past is Winter Night. Uh, Winter Night is actually one of the more interesting groups in this book, I think, because it is a, it's a, it's a, it's an Armageddon cult, essentially. Um, it, it, if you're, if you think about the, um, uh, the cult that bombed the, uh, Tokyo subways, they had, they, with that, what was it, that rice and gas attack back in the nineties, uh, same kind of deal. Uh, winter night is essentially a group based in Norse mythology that is trying to bring about Ragnarok. Uh, at the end of the world, the Norse end of the world, and and they're they're doing that by pretty much any means necessary. It's just it's it's very well written, um, and it's actually written. This is one of my favorite ones actually in this book. It's written by somebody who was a Winter Night member. Now, Winter Night, their modus operandi is they feed their cultists these chips these BTLs that turn them into, they make them feel like gods, like Norse gods. They're very violent, very, very gory, very hack and slash sim does not cover it. Um, it, it borderline stuff is, is what it is, but it's, it's all stylized around Norse mythology to where they, they think there's some Norse God uh, like Odin or something like that, or some avenging Norse warrior. And it just feels so freaking good but it screws their minds completely, and you get the sense of that when you're reading this particular story. Because, uh, you, you know, first paragraph right here, it, he says, I've betrayed everything I ever believed in. My career is in ruins. My family lies dead by my own hand, all because of Winter Night, because of the monsters, the inhuman fiends who made me kill, kill, kill my family, kill them all, drown them in blood, drowning. I'm, that's the kind of shit that gets peppered through the story. And it really does. It, it really does give you an impression of somebody who is they've they have lost it completely, or they're they're just about ready to to lose it completely. And he goes in to tell you the story about how he how he hooked up with Winter Knight um, and some of the things that he did for them. Um, the chip he describes the trip that he gets from the BTL chip and how absolutely amazing it is. And it's just, it, it's probably one of the most well-written uh, stories in this entire book. It, it, it really is. And it, it goes into some rules about the Berserker chips is what they're called and how they work and that sort of thing. And how the game rules for, for Winter Night are actually kind of extensive. Uh, I say rules, but they're not really rules. They're more, more guidelines. And that section is actually pretty extensive to the point where I have used Winter Night a couple of times in some past campaigns over the years. And it goes into vampires and uh, all sorts of stuff. The, the vampire one, I believe, is written by uh, Martin DeVries, which, or DeVries, however you pronounce it, who is a, uh, a very famous vampire hunter in Shadowrun. Um, I don't know if he's featured in it anymore, but he was he was fairly well known back in second and third edition. Um, and it's just this is just a a really good book, and it even has where is it? 
Oh, there's one section in here. Let me go ahead and go back to the ah, bugs. So there, page 64 of this book. Let me let me go ahead and navigate to that really quick. So bugs. This section talks about insect spirits. What? Why would we need a section on insect spirits? We have an entire book, Bug City, on insect spirits. What? what why the hell would they do something like this? Well, this actually puts a little spin on it, and it talks about how, you know, it's just after, I think it's just after the containment zone came down, um, or just before the containment zone comes down, but everybody thinks the bugs are gone, everybody thinks they're going away, but there's a question as to whether they're going away, or going into hibernation, or whether they're just getting smarter, and there's the the whole story is written, you know, very paranoid and 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 that sort of thing. And it's written by somebody who lives in the containment zone and that sort of thing. And it, it gives you a new way to use insect spirits and new things to do with insect spirits. Plus, midsection of the book, something that was very common in Shadowrun books of the time, it has full color art, full color, full page art on some of the conspiracies. So you've got the bugs, the creepy human looking like bugs who maybe are maybe are, are getting a little bit smarter in how they do things. You got uh Mr. Dark, a scene from that story earlier. Uh Tudor, another uh another one of the um uh, Avengers level threats that you see in this book. Uh Lofvir. Yeah, Lofvir does feature heavily in in this book. Why? Because he's a freaking dragon running a major mega corporation. Um, the if I remember correctly, the story about Lofvir is the epitome of why you should never deal with a dragon. I don't want to go into details, but essentially, he tells the story of somebody who thinks they screwed the, they screwed Lofvir and got away, and it turns out, nope, not what happened. Because dragons always think ten moves ahead. At least you've you've heard of four D chess. Yeah, dragons are playing ten D chess. So anyway, um, and then Halberstam's babies and vampires. Winter night. This is just kind of this is just really cool. I think this is probably the coolest picture. This is somebody tripping on the this is the the guy who was tripping on the berserker chip, kind of remembering how he felt while he was on that chip, and it just ugh. Really well done. Alamos 20K also features in here as well. Alamos 20K, of course, being the the racist, uh, uh, essentially the the new clan uh, in in Shadowrun, the ones who um, destroyed that metahuman town, killed twenty thousand people. You know, really horrible, nasty group. So, in the end, is threats worth getting? Yes. Without a doubt, 100%. It is it is a book worth getting. I know I say that about most Shadowrun books, but I mean, to be honest, most Shadowrun books of this era, 2nd and 3rd edition, even a lot of 4th edition, most of these books were worth getting. Because most of these books were chock full of uh, game information, background, and, and lore and shit like that. I mean, a lot of these books were really, really extensive and really helped paint a picture of what the sixth world is like and it, many books like the the street samurai catalog yeah they're out of date they're not used at all anymore and the, they're laughably out of date but it still gives you a really good sense of the world behind it the world building uh, that takes place in these books is is i think second to none i've seen very few rpgs that have a similar level of world building in them um Offhand, I can't think of any. Maybe Rifts from Palladium. That the world building in Rifts was actually was actually really good. The system, eh, not so much. But that might be the only other. Some of the World of Darkness games, um, not so much New World of Darkness, but more like the old World of Darkness from the '90s. A lot of the world building in those books very very similar to Threats. I believe it's because they had a couple of Shadowrun uh, former FASA employees working for them as well. I might be wrong on that, but Shadowrun was. By by and large, 
one of the few RPGs engaging in in such a high level of world building to the point where most of their source books were worth getting if you could find them. Um, and Threats is going to be worth, definitely worth getting uh, if you can find it. I've got a PDF copy of of Threats that I'm running off of here. Obviously, I've also got the physical copy somewhere in a box. I don't know where. Um, yes, it is dog-eared and nasty like a lot of my second edition books. Because when I was in high school, I read this stuff religiously. I mean, it, it, nine times out of ten, you would find my nose buried in a Shadowrun book of some kind, whether it's a novel or whether it's one of these source books. So definitely get it. Drive Through RPG likely has the PDF copy of this online that you can get. Um, you could probably find it on eBay as well for not too high a price. Uh, but definitely it's worth it getting worth picking up if nothing else it gives you a lot of really good information on a lot of really good groups and it gives you a lot of really really awesome campaign ideas that you can either create a whole new campaign out of or weave into your existing story without a doubt and that's the chip truth chummers let me know what you think in the comment section and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more shadowrun content hit that notification bell so you will always know when i upload a brand new shadowrun video and until next time remember to shoot straight and never ever deal with a dragon <laughs>